if you take a walk on a sandy beach on a very hot day and if you uh, haven't got any shoes on sometimes that sand can get so hot that it's it's almost unbearable to stand on but why doesn't the sea increase in temperature as much as the sand increases in temperature after all they're they're both getting the same amount of sun on them well this is all about a material property called thermal capacity and it's the reason that well, the sand receives thermal energy in the form of infrared rays from the sun and it heats up, it changes temperature quite quickly and gets very hot but the same energy that's applied to the water makes the water only increase in temperature a very small amount, maybe a one or two degrees Celsius. So let's check out this flashcard to summarize thermal capacity. A material with a high thermal capacity can absorb a lot of heat energy. But this will only cause a small temperature rise. Small temperature rise. It's as if that material has got lots of room for energy and it doesn't show a big temperature rise for it. So we've got an example here. Um, we've got two different types of bricks and uh, they're both being heated by a, the same heat source, in this case a candle. And let's say we put the candle underneath both of the bricks for 10 minutes. And we measure the temperature change of both bricks. Now, the one on the left that has a temperature change of 12 degrees Celsius, whereas the one on the right has only changed by 5 degrees Celsius. So which bricks have the higher thermal capacity and why? So we said that thermal capacity or a high thermal capacity means that materials can absorb a lot of heat energy but don't increase in temperature very much. So it must be this brick here, these bricks here. So these must have the higher thermal capacity, capacity, oh, just fit that on, because they have absorbed the same amount of energy, just put that in here, same uh, thermal energy absorbed or same thermal energy input, but they have a smaller temperature rise, a smaller temperature rise. Okay, so it's this guy here. The opposite is also true. If you take a one kilogram block of aluminium and uh, heat it, heat it up to let's say uh, 80 degrees. Celsius, and if you take a, um, let's see, uh, if you've got a, a container with uh, one kilogram of water in it, and we also heat that to 80 degrees, so this one is, is aluminium, Al, and this one over here is water, H2O, and we leave them in a room, and uh, so what would happen? Will they reduce in temperature at the same rate? Well, what we find is that after a, let's say, half an hour, this block has reduced in temperature to, let's say, uh, 30 degrees. It's nearly reached room temperature. But the container of water, which started off at 80 degrees, has only decreased in temperature down to 50 degrees. Why the temperature difference? They're both losing heat. Well, the reason is because water has a higher thermal capacity. A higher thermal capacity. And so this means it's got a lot more energy in it at this point here. At the, uh, when we've heated it up to 80 degrees, it's actually got a lot of energy in here compared to the aluminium. So it's going to take longer for that energy to be emitted. 
compared to the aluminium which has not so much energy it's got a lower thermal capacity and so that's the reason that the water is still at 50 degrees Celsius at this point here because it's still got a lot of energy a lot of thermal energy left in it to try and get rid of whereas the aluminium has nearly used up all of its thermal energy that it started with so I hope that makes sense thermal capacity can also um, be the reason that uh, objects uh, reduce in temperature by different rates when they cool.